start record. Okay, welcome everybody. This is Miranda from Live with Prima, and today we're going to be doing a mini series focusing on the wonderful new IOD molds. I have, I think I have every single one in the set. Really quickly before I show you, I did want to show you I have been using a lot of these. So every single project, you can do very simple techniques. This is with alcohol inks. I'll be showing you how to achieve this effect with them. And I've got one in the top there that kind of gets covered. And let me grab the other ones. These on the next two projects are so simple. All I did was spray them one time with a color bloom spray. And it just created a really cool, subtle effect. And it went into the recessed areas. Um, and then the last one I wanted to show you really quickly. This one's a little brighter. And this is probably my second favorite mold. I love the shape of this. And I went just a little extra and put some micro beads in there, but the possibilities are endless. Okay, why do you all want the IOD molds? Because they are just, not only are the designs amazing, but this is one of those things that you purchase one time and you have endless embellishments. So if you're on a budget, you know, as far as bang for your buck, these are the way to go. I have always loved using molds, but never really found ones that had, you know, a great design to them. Um, these are absolutely beautiful. So let me show you them really quickly. Um, I've got the product number on the back of every single one of them. Um, this one's 814779. It's absolutely beautiful. There's large ones, there's small ones, there's intricate ones, there's angels, there's flourishes. I mean, anything you can think of is on here. And you can buy this one time and have never ending embellishments. You know, I know we all love like the Prima resins and everything, but if people are on a budget, you, you know, you don't want to use like your items all up. These are amazing. Um, on the blog, they showed how to do cake design. You, these are food safe. That's a really good bonus for if you're a baker, a cake maker, cupcakes. These are food safe. So you can use your fondant. I think that's what it's called. Everything like that with them. So it's really amazing. So I'm going to show you guys how to make the mold to begin with and some of the ways to color them. So these are really, really fun, y'all. Okay, so I have those in there waiting. I'm going to go ahead and show you just the basics. Let's go with my favorite one. And what I typically do is I'll just take out a chunk of the paper clay. The, again, this is IOD2. They have the paper clay and they have the molds for you to use. So I just take a little piece of it and I roll it up just to make sure it's nice and smooth. If you feel like it's not moist enough, which I haven't had that problem yet, um, you can always add a little bit of water. I keep a bottle of water. This is not hairspray, it is water. Um, handy, just in case I need to moisten it. So I'm just gonna roll it up in a ball, and we're gonna go with this one right here, and I'm just gonna push it down into here. And it's you wanna have a little bit more, like obviously that's completely overfilled, um, but we're gonna get all the excess off. But it's better to have more so you can just scrape off the rest. I'm just gonna use my finger first, and all I'm doing is just kind of pushing off that excess. Okay, so I kind of move the mold around when I do it. So I'm going in the direction of the design and getting the excess off. So already it's that easy. If you're not a perfectionist, that's good enough. Let that dry and you're good to go. But I like to just push it down one more time with the palm of my hand and I kind of rock it a little bit just to make sure it's nice and flat. If you're a big perfectionist like me, you can also take something with a flat edge and kind of go on there and make sure it's perfectly flat. So when you're gluing it, you know, you don't have any um, bumps and, you know, lumpy areas. Okay, the one important thing that I would say is to make sure you have a clean mold when you're done. Here's that exact piece. You don't want, ha you don't want to have like any excess um, clay coming off the edges. You want this to be very detailed. So I just take a little bit of water, and this is just my preference, and I spray it one time, and I rub with my finger, and this just really smooths out the back part of it, and makes it really easy to get all of that excess clay off of the edges, so you get a really sharp, defined edge to your molds. And just keep like a rag nearby to kind of wipe your hands off as you go. Okay, so I'm just going all the way around, just like that, and you're done. Like. And that was me showing y'all, and that only took like 30 seconds. So that is it right there. Now, I some people like to take them out and let them dry. I leave them in there until they are dry. So I will leave these in here. Usually I do this at nighttime, so I'll leave them in overnight and take them out the next day. Okay, so these have been in here since yesterday. Okay, they're really easy to remove after that. This one's literally coming out already. So all you're going to do is I just kind of bend my mold a little bit. These are very, very easy to manipulate. 
and boom. So I don't know if you can tell, but there's some wider areas and then there's like some darker areas. That's because this front part has not been air dried yet. So even though it's out of the mold, you still want to let it dry a couple more hours. You know, you don't have to bake this clay, which is what I love about it. So you're just going to let it air dry. You want to make sure it's completely dry before you move on to painting it. These literally just pop right out once you let them dry a little bit. So I don't know if you can see just how detailed that is, but that is so super easy. Um, another tip I wanted to share, and I'm not going to pop all of these out. I did want to mention with some of these bigger designs, I don't know if you can tell, but there is a crack there. You can fix that. You can either spray water on there and rub it back out. As far as I'm concerned, it really doesn't bother me because when I'm gluing it down, I can just fix it. So you can't even tell from the front that there's a crack in the back, so it does not bother me at all. So it's fine unless you want to just make sure it's one whole piece and it's not going to break off and then just re-wet the back of it and smooth it out with your finger, okay? So even the large ones, and this one had some um, recessed areas in there and it comes out perfectly, like there's no problem here. Okay, so I'm going to move these out of the way really quickly. So that's the basics. That is how you get your beautiful mold. Like I said, I make a ton of these at one time and then just get them all out at once and go from there. Okay, so another tip I wanted to give you is when these are still a little bit wet, um, if you are doing like an altered bottle, for instance, like the one I did here, this is not a flat surface, so you don't want like a flat resin piece on there. It's just not going to look quite right. So the beautiful thing about these molds is you can kind of take them while they're still a little wet and you can bend them. Like this paper clay will bend without breaking or cracking. I don't know if you can see that. But you can kind of put it on here and bend it to the bottle or whatever you're trying to get it on and just leave it like you can either glue it just a tad bit like with a little bit of hot glue or you can just kind of do it like that and it let it sit like that and it will dry with that curved shape to it so it will fit whatever project you're trying to fit this on perfectly. That is one thing I really love about these molds is you don't have to have a completely flat um, piece to work with. So you can curve it to fit any project you're working on. Okay, so let me put, these are still a little bit wet, so I'm gonna move those away and grab some of my completely dried ones. Um, and I just kind of keep them in this tin here. You do want to make sure you store your paper clay in like an airtight bag, and I usually double bag it because you don't want this to dry out, okay? This is your magic maker right here, so you want to take very good care of it. These are some pieces that I already have dried. Here's two that I have colored already. This one I use chalk edgers on, which I'm going to show you how to create like a two-toned effect. This one I used ink. Um, alcohol ink and the new foil, the new gold foil from the Christine Adolph Rub Bombs, and you can see that metallic finish you get on there, and it's really pretty. Okay, so you can create some really cool effects here. I'm going to go in with this one right here, another one of my favorites. It's like a border flourish, and I usually take a little bit of clear gesso, and this is just my preference. Um, I've done it without gesso, and it worked just as well. But I like to give it just a, a little bit of clear gesso. I mean, this is paper clay, so essentially it does have paper in there. So I try to prep it and make sure um, it's going to take the colors and stuff well. So I just do a little bit of clear gesso on there. And I usually do that to all of them. I've missed it a few times, and like I said, I didn't notice a big difference, but it's just an easy way to do it. Now, if you just want to color these quick and easy, use your color bloom sprays. I'm going to use the cotton candy one, and the item number is 573737. And I like to shake these from the bottom to get that really mixed up all the color down there. Okay, and I am literally just going to spray it on here. Just three little sprays, just like that. Wipe off my excess. And this is what it's going to look like at first, okay? And you can see how it's really running into those recessed areas, and it's going to give you this really cool two-toned effect. That is what it looks like wet, and then when it dries, I don't know if you can see this one, this is what it looks like when it's dry. It's still got kind of like a white creamy top, and then it's just got that beautiful pink undertone, and it looks really vintage, okay? So that is one really quick way to color them. Just spray two or three squirts of your color bloom spray on there, and you're done. If you want a darker look, you know, after this dries, go in and do another spray. You can also heat set these, which I really recommend to do. 
because it is paper clay and I just feel like if you let it sit with like a lot of mediums on there it's going to re-wet and maybe lose its shape a little bit. So if you're going to be doing a ton of mediums and a ton of spraying I would recommend to um, heat set it just to make sure you know everything stays the same. Okay let's grab another one really quickly. As you can tell this is my favorite one. I've used it on everything. Okay another way to color them is with chalk edgers and I love 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 using these chalk edgers. I'm going to use a couple of different colors. This one's Old Rose, um, Sweet Pea, and Olive Vine. Let's go with those. Okay and what I do is I just push them onto my um, glass mat here a couple of different, ooh, that one is brand new. That one is like super, super um, saturated. All right, and this one's a little drier. Okay, so just push those down. I'm gonna grab my spray bottle. I just wet them a little bit. I can get my spray to work, there we go. Okay, and you're just gonna go in with one of the small paint brushes. These are from Finnevere's Art Basics. I love these paint brushes. I'm gonna go with this lighter one first. And you can just color them. Oh, really quickly. I usually spray them with water one time. This bottle's not cooperating. Just spray it just to get it wet so everything kind of moves on there really easily. So I'm going to go in with the pink and just kind of move it around. And it really colors these. I just wanted to show y'all no matter what you have on hand at home, you can color these beautiful paper clay pieces. If you have the color blends, use those. If you have paints, use that. Chalk edgers. The possibilities are endless. It's just you can use anything you have. You can go as detailed as you want or as subtle. It's just um, it's up to you. I think I'm going to skip that green. And it looks like I'm wasting a lot today. I'm sorry, y'all. Once I have it on there, I usually spray it one more time. If I can get my bottle to work. Okay. Just to make sure everything is nice and evenly spread on there. Okay. So this one is a lot darker than that first one we did. And one thing I usually do is I take a cloth or a paper towel and I kind of dab off the excess and I feel like this shows up the details. It's kind of like you're wiping off the raised areas like when you're embossing something and it really shows the details so much better. Okay, so when you wipe off the excess you get like this two-toned effect and it really shows the details on that piece. Okay, so that is another option using the beautiful chalk edgers. Okay, another thing I love to do is to use alcohol inks. It's probably my favorite thing to do if you're going for a vintage look. I feel like these two caramel colors and caramel and latte, I feel like these really create a perfect vintage look. And then if you use the tea stain with it as well, you're like, you've got a perfect little vintage piece. Okay, so I'm going to spritz it with water. And this is really quick and easy. And you're just going to drop your alcohol inks on there. And they're going to spread because you've already sprayed a little bit of water on there. And this creates a really vintage effect. I didn't have a lot of brown color blooms, so I opted for this when I did my chest piece. Uh, but if you have a lot of really pretty color blooms in these colors, that would be amazingly beautiful. All right, again, I'm going to spray it with water and just kind of let it run around into all those little crevices, okay? Just like that. So already you can see this beautiful vintage look. If you want to take it up a notch, one thing that I really like to do and I usually dab off my excess again, is use some of the micro beads. I feel like they just look amazing on there. So I'm going to use copper micro beads, and the item number is 962579. Okay, I'm going to use some, let's see here, 3D matte gel, and I'm just going to dab a tiny amount on in some areas just so those micro beads will adhere, just randomly, different areas. And this looks so pretty once it's all dry. I mean, I'm a microbead fanatic as it is, so I really like to use those. Okay, and then I'm just going to sprinkle some microbeads on there. Okay, not a whole lot. I'm just using my finger to sprinkle a little bit on there. You could pour it on there like I usually do, but the only reason I'm not is because I don't know where my little container is to catch them. 
I guess I could throw them in here really quickly because I want to show you all how pretty it looks when it's like covered with these. Okay. There we go. Okay. Tap off the excess really well. And then you've got this beautiful textured vintage piece to go on your projects. It's really, really pretty. Hopefully that's picking up on camera. So the micro beads go beautifully with those. I forgot to add the tea stain, but you can add some tea stain on there. And what I typically do is I just use the end of the um, nozzle, the little tube that picks up the liquid. And I just kind of randomly go in and dot it around. And it creates this really pretty effect. Okay. This is one of my favorites. It's pretty much empty, and that's my second time filling it up. And look how pigmented it still is. Okay, so that just creates like an extra, you know, vintage, another layer on there. Okay, so another thing you can do, I mean, the possibilities are really endless, y'all. I'm going to show you a couple more, is using the new watercolor confections or the oil pastels. Both of these are so easy to use, okay? Let me push these out of the way. All right, I'm going to grab... This one right here, and I'm going to go ahead and spritz it with water. These have already been primed with gesso. If you, um, I've done these ahead of time, so they are primed. Let's see. Let's pick a color. I'm usually afraid of color here. Let's go with blue. Okay, so I'm just going to add some onto my glass mat. I love having a glass mat to work on. Give it a little spritz of water, and mix it up. And again, this is so easy to do, y'all. So no matter what mediums you have from Prima on hand, you can color these and get really amazing results. Super, super pretty. Let me add a little bit more here because I want full coverage. These are just, I've, I love them. I have not made a project since these came in the mail to me without using at least one of these on there. I mean, they just stretch your budget infinitely infinitely I mean like you can just use them over and over and over and over the only thing you got to do is buy the clay um, you can also use resins you can you know like I said they're food safe you can make beautiful decorations for cakes and cupcakes you can do anything with these okay spray with water one more time and I'm being very quick with these y'all obviously you know take your time and you know really get that coverage on there okay so that's what that one looks like. Really subtle, really pretty. Oh, I forgot. Yes, thank you, Carrie. Not only are these food safe, y'all, but you can make soaps, you can make candles, you can do anything with these. I mean, the possibilities are endless. These molds are, you know, you can use them in any crafting arena, like soap making, candle making, food baking, you know, artsy stuff, crafting, the possibilities are completely in my shawl. You can do anything you want with these. Um, they're just amazing. So I'm going to show you one more. And this time I'm going to use the new watercolor confections. And on the blog they have shown a lot of really amazing things um, to do with the mold. So check out the blog, primatypepad.com and you'll see tons of inspiration when it comes to using these. All right, let me grab a different one. I sit, you can tell the ones I use all the time because I have a million of them. All right, I'm going to grab this one really quickly. Okay, these are the new watercolor confections. Um, Sharon just showed these in her last little mini-series. Um, they are absolutely amazing. I'm going to go for a metallic look on this one because I do a lot of like steampunky type projects. So I'm just getting some of this really pretty silver. Okay, I'm going to spray my mold. As you can, every time I, I usually wet it just a little bit so everything spreads nicely. Okay, so I'm just going to go on there with this. And how quick and easy is this, y'all? I mean, these are so quick. You just, when you get your hands on these, it's just going to open up a whole nother world. You don't have to your beautiful resin pieces because you can make your own gorgeous pieces. You don't have to worry about, you know, oh, well, that cost this much money. You can make these over and over and over and over and over. Definitely a must-have. Okay, so after I have that on there, I'm going to dot off the excess. 
and let it get up to the recessed areas. So that's just like a smoky gray color. And then one really fun thing that I noticed is, oh my goodness, I just looked up and saw that, Sharon. That is so funny. The ads on here are hilarious. So one more time, I'm going to grab my 3D mat gel, and I am just going to kind of hit some different areas on here, not being very selective. I don't want it to be like gunked up on there. That's my favorite word, gunked. Um, so I'm just kind of coating it. And then we're going to use the new foil, and I love this stuff, and it looks amazing on these molds. This is the new Prima Rub-On Foils, and it, item number is 585600. What color is this one? Three shades. It's called Shine On. It's like the golds and metallics and stuff. This is just a spare piece I've already been using, as you can see. And then I'm just going to go on here and just kind of rub it in there and get some of that foil on there. Um, let me use the end of a paintbrush. I find that usually works a little bit better than my fingers. Okay, so I'm just going to use the end of the paintbrush. And this is not an exact science. You're not going for perfection. You're just getting some extra little detail on there. So I am just rubbing this all around. Okay, just like that. I'm going to kind of pat it in with my finger and see some areas I missed. I love this foil. It is so versatile. Okay, so the gold foil goes on there very well. Obviously I'm doing this very quickly, but you can completely cover it with the foil or you cannot. Again, I have found when I'm using the foil, if I use the tea stain color bloom, it just meshes so well together. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that on there really quickly and that's pretty much it for that one. I'm trying to think if there's any other thing that I wanted to show y'all that I'm missing. I'm trying to keep this quick so that you know we can share it more and everybody has time to watch it. The whole point of this series is to be quick and informative and you guys can get some ideas and some inspiration. So that is what that looks like. The tea stain really brings out the foil. Okay. A binding agent on this. That's a good, I, I don't know, Carrie. That's a, that's a good, good question there. I don't know. Okay, you could also go in and add more of the microbeads. So we've got, I mean, how long did this take, y'all? And we've got beautiful colored pieces here to go with anything. I mean, this is just the easiest, easiest, easiest thing to do and you can add these to every project. I mean here's one on my bottle. So you can see the finished products. You can really go to town with adding more colors. Um, I'll show you again the little altered anchor here. This is with the teal color bloom and the micro beads. So you guys these are super simple, budget friendly. You don't have to be a scrapbooker or a crafter to use these. If you're a baker, a cake decorator, you know, you're into making soaps, you're into making candles, you know, the options are endless. So if you're going to get like one of the new items, I definitely think this should be on the top of your list because these are just amazing and the designs are incredible. So does anybody have any questions? Thank you so much, Sharon. I mean, there's a ton more techniques I could share with y'all, but I think y'all get the gist. Like you just take your paints, your sprays, your watercolors, oil pastels, these things will take any medium and they take them beautifully. Like there's no medium that looks better on these than another one. They look amazing. If you're making cakes, you know I saw them using like that beautiful gold dust on there. Um, I'm pretty clueless when it comes to baking coloring agents, but they had it on the blog and it was super pretty. So, okay. Ooh, <laughs> if Delena's making cupcakes, she's got to make them for me too. <laughs> Hello, Napur. Hello, everybody. Okay, I'm glad you guys like it. If you have any questions, you can shoot me a um, PM over on Facebook or write it on the Prima wall um, on Live with Prima, and I will answer them. But this is what we've got, y'all. And I hope you guys like them. Definitely grab your mold, y'all. The, these are a must have. Look at these designs, they're just beautiful. Okay, so thanks everyone for coming out. I really appreciate it. And I don't know when the next one will be, but there's going to be these mini-series periodically, you guys. And I hope you tune in and get some ideas and some inspiration with all the new products. Okay, thank you guys so much for coming. I'm going to hit stop record really quickly.